pop quiz. Which of these two shots has the accurate color of these cookies? Take a good look. You're gonna find out the answer later in this video. And I'm gonna show you how I achieved this effect using Final Cut Pro's motion tracking feature. Now, I was at NAB teaching a bunch of Final Cut students last week, and I was surprised to find out how many of them didn't know that much about the motion tracker in Final Cut Pro. So I thought, perfect time to do a deep dive on Final Cut Pro's motion tracker. Now, if you already know how to use the tracker, I've got 15 tips and hacks for you to get better results. I'm pretty sure you're gonna learn something new in this video, but we're gonna start all the way at the beginning. The first thing to know though about Final Cut's motion tracker is that it's an object tracker. So you can identify something in your frame that's moving, Final Cut will track it, and it'll either pin an object to it, or you can offset an object, but have the motion match whatever it is you've identified in your shot. Now this is different from, let's say, a planar tracker, which will track the shape of something as it moves in your frame, or a 3D tracker, which will track an object in 3D space. The Final Cut Pro Tracker doesn't do all of those things. If you're looking for that specific feature, you're gonna need a third-party plugin like the one I talk about in this video, which is awesome. It does all of those things, but it is kind of expensive. Not to worry, I'm gonna show you how to maximize the motion tracker native to Final Cut Pro, including how to mimic a planar tracker effect later in this video. All right, let's just dive right into it. Let's first start with the shot of this woman jumping rope. I'm gonna show you the basics of how to motion track in Final Cut Pro. So what I'm going to do is select this clip in my timeline, head over to the inspector and scroll down to the bottom where I see this line that says trackers. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And now in my viewer, I get a wireframe in my shot. I'm gonna add some text to this shot that's going to move with her body as she jumps. So I definitely wanna track something on this woman's body. So I'm gonna start by tracking her face. I'm gonna move this wireframe and resize and reposition it till it's really tight on her face. I wanna make sure that the area I'm tracking is identifiable to Final Cut Pro like this face, but I wanna make sure that my track is as tight as possible so it doesn't get confused by let's say the bricks in the background. Now it's time for my first tip, which is that I'm going to, in the inspector window, change the analysis method to machine learning. I'm doing this because late last year when Final Cut dropped version 10.7 of Final Cut, they made a huge upgrade to the machine learning analysis for the motion tracker. So that's the one that I recommend you use. Once I've set that to machine learning, you're gonna wanna head up to the top of the viewer and look for the analyze button. You can either select analyze right here to track both forward and backward in your shot, or you can just track forward using these arrows or just track backward using these arrows. I'm gonna hit that middle button and you'll see down in my timeline the progress of my track. And if I scrub through, it looks pretty good. But I'm not gonna stop there. My next tip for you is to try motion tracking multiple elements in your clip to see which one gives you the best results. So I already started with her face. Next, I'm gonna look for something with very high contrast. Let's add another tracker in our inspector and I am going to select her shoes. They're really dark over the white background and they're moving right along with the rest of her body. And again, I'm going to hit analyze. Now let's see how we did. I'm going to connect this text over my shot and you can see it's just static text right now, but let's make it move with her body. So I'm going to select that text in my timeline, enable the transform tools in my viewer and drop down here next to where it says tracker. And then on the tracker field, you'll see that I have the options of object track and then object track two. The first one is obviously her face and the second one would be her shoes. Let's select object track. And I think it looks pretty good, but we can make some changes here. Back under tracker, let's change the behavior from offset to tracker to pin to tracker so I can show you what that does. When you pin an object to the tracker, it's going to mimic the scale, position, and rotation of the object we tracked. So this one is going to be attached right to her face but that's not really what I want. I want it to be offset. So I'm gonna undo that and drop down next to tracker again. And you'll see that I have the position and rotation enabled in this track. My third tip for you is to disable any parameters you don't need to get the smoothest result. So in this case, I only care about the position, not the rotation. So I'm going to disable the rotation. And then I can take this text and reposition it anywhere I want in the screen. And it'll still maintain that motion track. And without the rotation, I think it looks a little tidier. One more time, let's go back under that tracking menu 
and let's select object track two just in case we get a better result from tracking her shoes. Now, I definitely think the face is better, so let's switch that back. Let's add another element to my shot. These are some counting numbers from the generators library in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna reposition these numbers where I want them in the lower left here. And let's again open up that tracker menu while I'm selected on those counting numbers. Tip number four is that you can apply multiple objects to a single object track in Final Cut Pro. So now everything's moving in unison. Let's move on to the skateboarding shot for my next couple of tips. This next one is something that really surprised my students at NAB, which is that you can take effects from your effects browser and instead of dragging them to the clip in your timeline, you can actually drag them right into the frame in your viewer. Just keep holding down your mouse and hover around different elements in your frame. So let's say I wanted to blur out this woman's face. It's going to detect her face. And then if I hit analyze, now her face is blurred out and it tracks with the entire duration of the shot. I can still modify the parameters in the inspector on that track. Now this doesn't work as great with every effect in your browser. For instance, let's say I wanted to apply a vignette to this shot. And let's say I wanted this vignette to stay centered on the subject of my shot, this woman here. I'm gonna disable the blur on her face. You can see the vignette doesn't really work as successfully. So in a situation like this, I would use an adjustment layer. This is tip number six. I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer and drop it on top of this clip. And instead of reaching for the boring standard vignette that comes with Final Cut Pro, I'm going to apply this other vignette that I built a couple of videos ago. It has so much more control. Like you can actually change the color and the size of the vignette on the X and Y values and the blend modes. If you want this vignette and you have Apple Motion, just follow along on that tutorial. If you don't have Apple Motion, you can still pick up this effect if you join my Patreon community. All right, so to track this effect, what I would do is select this adjustment layer, enable the transform tools, and on the tracker menu, let's assign that object track that we did on her whole body. And now you can see that the vignette stays centered on her throughout the frame. Now, obviously we're seeing gapping around the edge of the frame, not to worry. In the inspector window, I'm just going to increase the scale of the adjustment layer in my transform tools. And then on the vignette, let's just adjust the size and position. So it's exactly how we want it. And now I'm going to select my color and then dial down that opacity. So it's really subtle. And now that vignette is tracked around her. Before we move on to my next tip, if you guys like this video, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. For my next couple of tips, let's move on to this portrait shot. I wanna add a radial blur around this woman. So I'm gonna select the radial blur effect in my effects browser, drag it right to her face. And clearly that's not the effect that we want. So tip number seven, you can invert these masks in the inspector window under the radial blur. Hover your cursor over here to reveal this drop down and let's select invert. And now let's change our analysis method to machine learning and track. And now we've got a radial blur around our subject. However, you might be thinking, yeah, but her body's blurred out too. Tip number eight, you can actually add multiple shapes to your motion track. So you saw that I selected her face for my motion track. Now, again, in the inspector window under that same dropdown, let's select add shape. And now I've got a second shape in my viewer, and now I'm gonna reposition that second shape around her body and assign the tracker to be the same face track we originally made. And I'm going to expand the original one to kind of bring in more of her hair. And now she is in focus and the background has that radial blur applied to it. So this next shot is the one that you saw at the beginning of our video. This is these cookies where I changed the color. If you guessed that the right frame was the accurate color of these cookies, you were correct. So let me show you how I did that. So in the color category in my effects browser, I'm gonna grab the colorize filter and I'm going to hover it over my cookie here. And I'm just gonna reposition and resize my wireframe and then change the analysis method to machine learning and let's track. And if we scrub through here, you can see that my wireframe is really kind of changing shape a lot because the cookie goes a little bit out of frame. So I'm going to open up the tracker menu and disable the scale. 
which might look a little scary. We've kind of lost our shape, but tip number nine is to click on over to the shape mask here and resize. So my entire cookie is covered. And now as I scrub through, that shape mask stays the same size. It doesn't get compressed. All right, in my inspector window, let's change this color to the one we wanted. So I'm gonna remap the whites to this kind of purple, and then I'm gonna copy that color to the blacks, and then select it on the black swatch. I'm going to dial that down darker. And in my inspector, I'm gonna pump up that intensity. And that looks good on this cookie, but you can see that I'm getting a halo of purple around it on my other cookies and on this surface here. And my little coconut flakes or whatever these are have now turned purple too. Now to make sure we're only colorizing the specific cookie that we want, we're going to tip number 10, use a color mask. So on the colorize effect in my inspector, drop down and select add color. And now with this eyedropper, I'm going to color pick my cookie. Now you can see that there's a pink cookie at the top of the frame that I'm also selecting, but that's okay because that cookie is outside of my shape mask. Now you can see there's parts of my cookie that are still pink. Tip number 11 is to use the shift in option keys as you color select to fine tune your color mask. So because I wanna add this hot pink to my color mask, I'm going to hold down the shift key as I click with my eyedropper. I'm literally just gonna click once. If there was something I wanted to deselect from my color mask, like for instance, these little white flakes here seem to have a purple hue on them, I'm gonna hold down option and just click to bring them back to white. I think that looks great, so why stop there? Tip number 12, you can apply multiple effects with multiple color masks to multiple objects in a single clip. Now let's do the same thing for this green cookie in the background. Again, I'm going to grab the colorize effect, drop it onto my object, and resize and reposition my tracker. Let's hit analyze to track. And again, I'm going to modify the color in the same way that I showed you before. Add that color mask. And there is our blue cookie, it looks really cool. Let's move on to this shot of these fish and I'm going to show you how to, tip number 13, mimic the look of a planar tracker by utilizing the color mask technique that I just showed you. So I'm gonna reach for this comic cool look effect and I'm gonna drag it onto this purple fish here. Let's switch this on over to machine learning and refine our shape mask and analyze. So I've applied that comic look to this fish, but it is also sort of affecting the background. Let's head up to our inspector and apply a color mask. And I'm gonna color select this fish. And now it looks like I'm tracking the shape of this fish when I really just used a color mask. Let's keep it going. I'm going to apply a comic effect on this yellow fish here, switch it to machine learning. And again, we're gonna end up with multiple object tracks on a single clip to keep us organized. Tip number 14, you can rename your object tracks right here in the inspector by double clicking on them and relabeling them. Again, I'm gonna apply a color mask. So I'm just affecting this yellow fish. And now let's hit the analyze button. Now, you know that yellow fish just drops in at the end of my clip, but my motion tracker tracked the entire thing. And in fact, it jumped onto this fish here. If I wanna correct for that in the tracking editor, I can just select the tracker in my timeline where I don't need it to motion track and hit delete. And now it's not grabbing anything else in my frame. So I hope this gave you a new appreciation for the motion tracker in Final Cut Pro. Which tip did you not know? Let me know down in the comments. I picked out some other videos for you and I'll see you again.